Good morning, everyone. I'd just like to share with you a few simple thoughts as we prepare to enter Holy Week 2020. First of all, I want to thank each of you for your resilience and willingness to adapt to our new temporary situation of having to keep our churches closed so as to play our part in helping to reduce the spread of the coronavirus. I won't deny that it was a very difficult decision for me and for my brother priests to make, particularly as being able to get to Mass is so precious, so central to our lives as Catholics, and also because we recognise the lockdown period would include this most holy of weeks in the Church's calendar. As your Bishop, I've tried my best here in the chapel at Bishop's House in Nottingham to live stream Masses, times of Eucharistic adoration, the Rosary and other devotions from a very simple webcam. And many other priests across our diocese have done similar things to try and enable people to join in these services. I know that in the absence of actually being able to participate in Mass and receive our Lord in Holy Communion, so many of you across our large and very widespread diocese have made great use of and greatly appreciated this streaming effort. So I thank you for participating in Mass in those ways. I've also heard heartwarming stories of the Christian witness of countless Catholic laymen and women across our diocese who have put their faith into action at this time and reached out to many others with forms of practical care and prayerful support. One example that comes to mind is of a Filipino nurse who, when Father John Berry, one of our elderly priests, was critical in hospital, said prayers with him at his bedside. To hear of this and to know that he did not die alone was a great comfort to me, more particularly to his family, to his brother priests and close friends who are not allowed into the ward. I think also, of course, of our valiant teachers in our diocesan schools who continue to teach the children of the national health staff, other key workers and, of course, vulnerable children. Some of these teachers will be in school on both Good Friday and Easter Monday. I know of many other Catholics who continue to support the elderly and the housebound in their parishes by means of a phone call. All of these simple ways are just so effective in us living out our faith and bringing hope and comfort to others. Secondly, I want to applaud the creative work that's been going on to make prayer spaces in your homes, for yourself and for your family. Our focus this year on the scriptures, we've called it the year of the word, has meant that many of our parish scripture groups have continued to meet, as it were, by means of video conferencing facilities. I've heard too of many single people who've been connecting with others for prayerful support by means of technology and social media. All of these initiatives and many others I could mention all serve to illustrate how important the domestic church is, the life of the family is in the life of our parishes and our diocese. Thank you for all those wonderful initiatives. Finally, I want to emphasise that even under these most unusual circumstances of the coronavirus pandemic, this Holy Week 2020 can still be one of the most prayerful and spiritually uplifting weeks in the Church's calendar. Here are just a few simple suggestions. The first is set a schedule for Holy Week. Many of us have already spent a few weeks together now in our homes and the walls might feel at times as if they are closing in on us. So I think it's important to create a daily schedule. Set aside some times for the following. For prayer, creating that simple prayer space just with a crucifix and or a candle as a focus. Some spiritual reading, reading the Passion of the Lord seems an obvious but really good thing to do. In your meals, where possible, gather together as a family, keep them simple but make them special. 
try to remember to say the grace before all of those meals. Just an expression of thankfulness to God. Rest and recreation is so important, including time outside, if that's possible for you. There are always practical things to be done, particularly if you are a family or indeed uh, somebody living on their own. I would encourage you to do the bigger things, uh, if you can, in those early days, Monday to Wednesday. And try and leave then those days, Thursday, Holy Thursday to Saturday, uh, freer of those bigger projects, those bigger initiatives. So that you have a little bit more time just to be still, to be quiet, to reflect. The three important days, Holy Thursday, Good Friday and Holy Saturday, I would say try and set yourself a spiritual focus for each of them so that you can truly encounter with the Lord each of those days and so unite Christ's suffering, death and resurrection with the reality of your own lives. Here are some simple suggestions. For the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Thursday evening, maybe take the theme of offering. As you follow the Mass by means of streaming, or by reading the scripture text of the Mass in your Missal, or by means of Magnificat, which can be downloaded for free, maybe focus in on the words of Jesus at the Last Supper, which we hear at every Mass. These beautiful words. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In response to those beautiful words, make an offering of yourself to the Lord. Offer him your life, everything that's on your heart now, fears, worries, anxieties, as well as good things. After the Mass of the Lord's Supper, traditionally, we've stayed a little while uh, watching before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. This year, for the Catholic Church in England and Wales, uh, that watching with the Lord will be streamed from St Chad's Cathedral in Birmingham. At the end of what I'm saying today, the text will be available, and I'll also make the links that I'm mentioning available to you as well. During that time when we cannot be before the Lord, but you might be following it uh, streamed, you might find it helpful to try and be still during that time, emptying all that's in your mind so as to be truly there with Jesus for a little while. It's not as easy as it sounds because our hearts and our minds are full of so many things. So be gentle, be patient with yourself but try to come to a, a little moment or two of stillness, simply being there with Jesus, for Jesus. So we move to Good Friday, and the theme there, I would suggest, is one of surrendering. Again, as you follow the Good Friday service by means of streaming, or by reading St John's Passion in your Missal, or by means of the Magnificat, focus in on that theme of surrendering. Just as Jesus surrendered everything to the will of his Father, and especially through his final words on the cross, it is accomplished. Try to enter into this by surrendering to Jesus all your dreams, all your hopes, your desires, your prayers, and seeking instead his will for you. The prayer of Jesus to his Father in the Garden of Gethsemane might be helpful. You remember those words of Jesus, who struggled, but whose final prayer was, not my will, but yours be done. Then kiss the crucifix you have in your prayer space, or the crucifix on your rosary, as an expression of your surrender, your desire to do God's will in your life. Then maybe simply say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we come to Easter Saturday. It's one of waiting, isn't it? Waiting upon the joy uh, of Easter. But maybe look at it this way, that there's nothing that Jesus would not do for love of us. He went down to the very depths of hell that day for love of us. There is no one who is beyond the reach of the love of God. You may wish, in the absence of the opportunity to go to confession, to make a perfect act of contrition. What I mean by that is, 
quietly getting a, a little space for yourself, looking at the crucifix, and just telling Jesus your sins and expressing to God your desire for forgiveness. And also saying that at the next opportunity you will get to confession. This, in these exceptional circumstances, gains for you forgiveness of your sins, even grave sins. So take that wonderful opportunity. God is good. No one is beyond the love of God and his forgiveness is always there for us. And so we come to the Easter Vigil and maybe the focus there would be the light of Christ, an obvious one I know, but a brilliant one. And I would encourage families who wouldn't normally be able to come to the rather, rather long Easter Vigil ceremonies and the Mass to think about joining in this year, as it were, the Easter Vigil from St Barnabas Cathedral, which I've asked to be at the earlier time of seven o'clock so that families might be able to join in. If you're unable to do so, then I would encourage you to light a candle in your prayer space. Read the Easter Vigil Gospel, which you can download from Magnifica or find in your Missal, and then quietly reflect upon that theme of the risen Jesus as the light of the world. Our world at, at times, and particularly now, feels very dark. But always in the darkness, we can find the light of Christ. His light, we know, can overcome any darkness. So quietly ask him to light and to guide your way through life, particularly at this time. So we come to the joy of the Easter Sunday. I think it's an opportunity to renew our commitment to Jesus as his disciples. If you're unable to join in the streaming of Mass from your church or from St Barnabas Cathedral, and so join, as we usually do, in renewing our baptismal promises, then I would encourage you to download uh, from, your, um, from Magnificat or find in your Missal the baptismal promises and then go to your prayer space and incorporate those baptismal promises into a few Easter Sunday prayers. Maybe read the Gospel of that Sunday from your Missal or from Magnificat. Renewing our baptismal promises at Easter is a way of expressing again the yes we have made to Jesus. We've made a yes to know, to love and to serve God in our daily lives as Jesus' disciples, as disciples of the risen Lord Jesus. Not in all of these uh, Holy Week services, I will be praying for all who are suffering from the effects of the coronavirus pandemic and praying that the Lord will comfort and reassure all who are anxious at this time. And I know that so many of us are feeling anxious. But my prayer for all of you uh, is this. May Holy Week, with all its restrictions this year, be a grace-filled time for each and every one of you. And may the risen Christ Jesus bless you and all your loved ones. Amen.